At 25 years of age I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, basically a death sentence. One day before undergoing Whipple surgery, the doctor called to say they made a mistake and I have a rare disease that can be cured with a simple pill. What horrible mistake has you doctor made almost made? Got told I had a possible cancerous growth in my throat. It was a lodged penny from when I was little. 19 years don't remember eating it. I think I am half to blame. In their defense, your body grows tissue over foreign objects that have been hanging out inside of you for too long. This would make it look exactly like a tumor. A friend's daughter was complaining about a headache one day when I was in the car with her. We all marked it off as a harmless cold, but took her to the doctor just in case. Doctor agreed, didn't really bother checking and brushed it off as a cold too. She passed away the next day, turns out it was some sort of brain hemorrhage. When I was a kid, I constantly suffered from horrible problems with my tonsils. Unfortunately, my family's doctor didn't believe in having kids get their tonsils taken out, and also didn't think it was my tonsils anyway, despite how swollen and gross they were. As a child he always said it was strep, it never was, and as a teen it was always mono, which it also never was. Finally, when I was in college I'd had enough and just lied about my symptoms to get him to send me to a specialist. The specialist took one look at my throat and scheduled me for surgery since my tonsils were, by that point, rotting. He also noticed a defect in my left nostril that was preventing most of my airflow. Family doc never noticed that, either. So I had my tonsils removed as an adult which is apparently worse than it is for kids, all because my family doctor didn't notice my dying tonsils. For years. I had something similar, but my tonsils were handled earlier. I wound up having a very active immune system because of it, I don't really get sick, even around sick people. Throughout my 30s I had multiple and severe stomach and back pain related problems. My doctor insisted that it was nothing, said I had PMS. That I was a hypochondriac. That I was just a whiner looking for attention. Turned out I had colon cancer. Tumors got so large they completely blocked my intestines. I developed toxic megacolon and almost died. The surgeon who did the emergency surgery told me that if I didn't go to the air that night I probably would have been dead the next day. Toxic megacolon sounds like a new horror movie that would come out these days. I used to get nosebleeds all the time as a kid, and I'd be covered in unexplainable bruises from my head to my feet. I was always kinda small, slight, and pale, so they were impossible not to notice. My mom was convinced I had leukemia or something. I remember a period of time where I was in a different specialist's office every week. There wasn't anything really wrong with me, though, I felt fine. And yet each specialist would recommend another. Then, randomly, a babysitter had discovered the real problem. Sleepwalking. My brother did the same thing. But the nosebleeds for him were deviated. Something. He ended up have over 9 surgeries for it. You were so lucky. As someone with cancer. I wish they messed up on me. I wish they messed up all the biopsies and scans. Sorry to hear. I haven't had anyone close to me get cancer so this really opened my eyes and I've definitely changed my priorities towards helping people with serious problems like cancer. Oh you lucky lucky freak. I, too, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and then told that it was actually autoimmune pancreatitis. But I only found out after the goddang surgery. My first therapist said that being gay was a disease. So there's that. But a bigger mistake was when she told my black Jewish liberal parents her opinion. But her biggest mistake was an ochre pantsuit, with Linda Evans shoulder pads. There is more to this story involving what your parents did to him her, I hope. If so, I wish to hear it, please. When I was born the doctor gave me a near perfect bill of health and ran off to watch college basketball. My mom and a nurse discovered I was dying of pneumonia an hour later. Oh wow, glad that you'll be okay. Cancer is just a nasty experience. Well, it wasn't a mistake as it was an error. Okay it was a great error. I went to the doc for some sinus problems. He decided to give me a shot. I still don't understand why. Anyway I got it. Two minutes later, my body breaks out in hives and I feel my throat swelling up. I was rushed into emergency. Turns out, 
He prescribed a shot of penicillin, knowing that I'm allergic to penicillin. I quickly changed my doctor after that. Between 2021 I started drinking a lot of fluid, peeing a lot, and waking up with an incredibly dry tongue. Think sandpaper, seriously. I would get shakes, the kind you get when you get extremely cold. I lost a lot of weight fast. Family, friends and girlfriend got concerned so I went to a clinic where the doctor prescribed some antibacteria pill. Nothing goes away in terms of those symptoms so I decide to go to the ER after some convincing. My blood sugar was 64. Welcome to diabetes land. Nowhere near as serious as yours, but I woke up one morning when I was 16 with horrible stomach pain. I'd have asked to stay homesick, but it was the day before finals, and I really, really needed the time to write those biology notes we were allowed to have. So I dragged my butt to school. About a half hour into class, I felt like I was going to throw up. Asked to go to the nurse, took a detour to the bathroom. This started a day long spree of vomiting roughly every 20 minutes. Whether there was anything to vomit up or not, they sent me home. Around 2.30, mom came home early from work to take me to the doctor, who informed me I had a stomach flu and to go home and sleep. I told her I couldn't freaking sleep, I'm puking non-stop and it hurts like heck. I get a pat on the head and assurances it'll be fine. Mom took me to the ear instead, after reassuring themselves that I was not, in fact, pregnant. They took me in for surgery. My appendix hadn't burst, but if I'm remembering the doc correctly, it had gone gangrenous already. They were going to let me keep it, and that's the reason they gave me for not letting me have it in a jar. I was pretty super pee at my doc. They said if I had gone home, they figured it would have burst by late evening. Not very serious, but one time when I was feeling very sick and had a throat that felt like I was swallowing chainsaws, my mom took me to the family doctor. He refused to even do a throat swab, insisting that it was only a cold. After I had constant nausea, trouble breathing, and couldn't stand up for long periods at a time we went to a walk-in clinic. After a few tests we were informed that I not only had strep, but also pneumonia and mono. We were not impressed with the family doctor. An oncologist my mother had once told her, I have done everything I can for you, maybe your next move should be to take a walk in the woods without a compass. I told him that if I ever saw him again, he'd be dead. As a doctor, I couldn't imagine saying that to a patient. If I found out a fellow physician I knew said that, I'd probably beat the crap out of him for you. Nothing worse than jaded doctors. I had my doctor tell me I had an irregular pap. He then proceeded to tell me it was uterine cancer and the best course would be a hysterectomy. I was 24. He informed me that the cells were most likely a herpes virus and asked if I had been with various partners. I had not been with anyone but my husband since we were married. We had had our first child about one year prior and they screen you for STDs to protect the baby. The doctor suggested I question my husband's fidelity. We scheduled for a biopsy and I went home to wait for two weeks. Pure torture. My husband and I dickassed his fidelity. He promised he had not cheated but was miserable with fear that a herpes virus had lay dormant and he had passed it on. I had the biopsy and waited some more for the results. After about a week a woman from the lab calls sounding confused. She said the biopsies all looked normal so she pulled my original file. Looking over the pap results she was even more stumped. Nothing in the results were abnormal. She told me I did not have cancer or the herpes virus. I was perfectly healthy. I never went back to that doctor. Not as serious as this, but when I was 14 I went to the doctor complaining of back pain. It was right at the bottom of my spine. And the only reason my dad took me is because 14 year old should not be having these kinds of problems. And he was worried. The doctor told me I'd put too much stress on my lower back and suggested a physio. I woke up the next day literally paralyzed by pain. The pain had shot all the way up my spine and I couldn't move. My dad rushed me back to the doctor. I insisted on seeing a different one. But same practice. And she was horrified. All the skin around the base of my spine was really swollen. I had some kind of infection. I presume I picked up while camping. That had gone rogue and blown up my back. He ended up cutting me open. Minus anesthetic. 
to relieve some of the pressure, then I had to go in for surgery to remove the infection. Had my first doctor been competent I could have been spared 2 months, waiting time for operation of excruciating pain, and being cut open on my doctor's table. When I was 18 I was in a severe snowboarding accident, right after it happened, I went to the hospital, because I wasn't able to stand up, put any pressure on my left leg, etc. The pain was unbearable, and I have a pretty high pain tolerance. The doctors took x-rays of my leg, knee and hip, they agreed it was just a hairline fracture on the hip and it would heal on its own within a few weeks. The pain was unexplainably bad though, I thought to myself, it couldn't just be a hairline fracture. Just for some background, this occurred out of the state I live in, I was visiting friends so they took me to the closest. Uh, I called the doctor back when I got home from vacation just to confirm they only saw the fracture because my pain was not getting any better, despite it being a few weeks. Doctor says it's fine, I decide I'm going to go to my own doctor to see what's up. My doctor is very thorough, and has diagnosed every single thing wrong with me over the years flawlessly, so he gives me a CAT scan, x-rays, ultrasound, whatever. Luckily he did, because it wasn't just a hairline fracture. The entire hip joint was shattered at the back, which they couldn't see in the x-ray alone since it's flat. Not only that, the freaking femur was dislocated. Not only that, but there was a piece of bone moving towards my freaking spine that needed to be moved immediately. He sent me into emergency surgery the following morning to fix my crap. If he hadn't, I would have had crippling arthritis and a gimpy leg for the rest of my life. Or maybe would have died from that rogue bit of bone. You shouldn't use Facebook links for photos. Those numbers in the link can be used to find your profile. Just a heads up. When I was in second grade I had horrible tummy cramps. Of course my parents took me to the family GP and he said it was gastro. This went on for almost a year and in that time I was on medication. One of the doctors I got sent to only increased and decreased my medication and didn't ask for any further tests. We soon changed doctors as it had been 14 months with no idea what was wrong with me. The new doctor straight away knew something major was wrong. I was now 8. I had a test so they could see my insides, can't remember the name of the exact test, and they found out I had ulcerative colitis, inflammation of the large bowel, and had to be removed immediately. At the age of roughly 9 or 10 I had a colostomy bag. I found out I had that this year, 9 day hospital stay, yay. Didn't have to have surgery or drastic recovery measures though just shitloads of pills. Pretty much the most humiliating 9 day experience of my life. High five for the crap you've gone through, I feel yeah. When I donated blood, a week later the clinic called me back and told me I have HIV. They didn't really mention the possibility of a false positive and I was pretty ignorant on the subject. I kept thinking this is impossible. I haven't ever done drugs. I haven't even kissed anyone let alone sleep with them. How could this have happened? My dad calmed me down. Told me about false positives and everything and we scheduled an appointment with my doctor. He got several vials of blood for three separate tests and said to come back after. My mom came with me to the next appointment. My doctor walks in and starts off with telling me that the test revealed I have diabetes. I was furious when he burst out laughing and insisting he was kidding. This was serious damn it. So we move on. As he expected the first test which isn't supposed to be very effective came back positive. Then he flips the page and said the other two were positive as well. So I did have it. He was going to get some paperwork and talk to me about my options. I sat there with my mom feeling like my life was over. I was getting ready to cry all over again when suddenly, my doctor runs back in the room. I'm so sorry I was reading the results wrong. The results are negative. You don't have HIV, just a lot of protein in your system. I wanted to attack him. I had several doctors tell me my hand wasn't broken and after months of pain, I went to a specialist and he discovered it was a pretty bad dislocated bone that had chipped another yet. I punched oak for the first and last time. I will never understand how the previous doctors didn't see it because, when the specialist showed me the break, it was as clear as day without a medical degree. I needed surgery. 
My friend took it hard for mountain biking. We were at the hospital and the doctor said, after taking x-rays, that his collarbone was slightly broken, but it was unlikely that he would need surgery. I saw the x-rays a few days later and it looked like there had been an explosion, multiple bone fragments all over the place. I have no idea what the doctor was looking at. Not me but a classmate in middle school. She was messing around outside doing something or other, and fell and got an enormous cut on her head. She went to the local hospital and got patched up, and they told her she was completely fine and sent her home. A few hours later her vision was blurry for no apparent reason, so her parents drove her over an hour to a children's hospital in the city. Whoops. She had bacterial meningitis. They cleared it up with antibiotics, but they told her that if she hadn't come into the hospital that night, it was around 8 p.m., so they very well may have put it off until the next day. She would have been dead by morning. At 10 years, I had a slipped capital femoral epiphysis. The growth plate slipped 50% out of its proper place in my left hip. I had a pin put in place, and I ended up with avascular necrosis by age 13, when a different surgeon removed the pin. I was never informed by anyone at my previous orthopedic practice, despite regular x-rays and checkups. My new surgeon told me the old one was most likely at fault and that we should sue for malpractice, because I will definitely need a full hip replacement before my mid-40s. I'm 26 now. My mom didn't sue, because she didn't want to ruin anyone's life, except her own daughter's. Apparently, the statute of limitations ran out when I was 16. Thanks, mom. By the way, hip pain got me out of bed an hour and a half ago. Not me, but my dad was given a prescription that would have killed him. I don't remember why. Could have been the wrong dose or combination, had the pharmacist not noticed. Well, first, congratulations on not having pancreatic cancer. I hope this reversal of what must have felt like a death sentence inspires you to live a full life. Taking corticosteroids must seem like nothing in the face of what you thought you'd be undergoing, but do prepare yourself for the side effects. Start taking calcium, vitamin D, and ask about prescription bisphosphonates to reduce the risk of bone thinning. Also, I'm sure your doctor will mention this, but it is really beneficial to you to taper off the corticosteroids rather than just stopping. When you're taking them for longer than a couple of weeks, your adrenal glands reduce their own output of your body's natural steroids, so stopping without tapering can lead to excessive fatigue, body aches, lightheadedness, and problems fighting off things like pneumonia. Here's hoping you make a speedy recovery. At around age 10, my older brother, 14, and I were playing golf. While I was teeing off, he was behind me practicing his swing. I had no idea what he was doing or that he was so close. And after I turned around he hit me, full force, with the driver, on my left side. The next day, or maybe even later that same day, my mother took me to the doctor. After spending 20 or so brief minutes there, he dismissed me, sending me home saying that I'll be fine with just a little rest and relaxation. Cool, but that night I could not lay completely flat without gasping for brief. So my parents made the decision to take me to the emergency room. Turns out that I had a ruptured spleen and had been bleeding internally. If we had listened to that doctor's advice from before, I would have died. Oddly, that doctor passed away shortly after I saw him. Weird coincidence. 24 here, and I'm actually in the hospital right now. I went back to the doctor after dealing with pleurisy for a week because the medicine I was taking was making me feel extra nauseous. They hooked me up to the vital machine and said, we need to take you back now, you're having a heart attack. I start immediately tearing up and a ton of doctors rushed around me. For a good 10 minutes I was laying there thinking I was going to die when finally one of the doctors tells me that the previous symptoms suggest that it is pericarditis, which it was. Comparing a 1-2 hour surgery where tubes are placed around my heart to a several hour ordeal where a catheter is inserted into my leg up into my heart possibly resulting in open heart surgery, I was glad it was the first option. I've never been more scared. When I was quite young, roughly 8 years old, my mother read in a magazine the symptoms of a certain form of cancer. I never asked what. 
but it was low abdominal so possibly bowel cancer. These symptoms included non-trivial things like crapping blood. My mother thought she had all of these and presented her case to the doctor who said well if you've read it, then you've got it haven't you and basically called her an idiot and said the symptoms were nothing but stress. After going again and again and being repeatedly turned away, she begged the doctors to have tests done at the hospital so she could be sure, which they eventually agreed to to get her to shut up. Guess what the results were? She survived. TL. DR. My mother got the symptoms for a certain form of cancer. Doctors said it was stress. I got sick as a kid. Concerned. My parents took me to the doctor. They said I was fine. It was just the common flu. Two days later and I got sicker. My mom took me in again. She was once again. Told I just had the flu and that she was overreacting. Sometimes the flu takes a while to get rid of, you know. When I proceeded to get even sicker, she rushed me to the hospital. Turns out I had pneumonia. This happened two more times, I had a crap immune system as a kid, within the span of three years, and each time my mom took me to a different doctor, she was told I had the flu. The third time I caught it we just went straight to the hospital and they finally gave me one of those shots that prevents that crap. My grandmother also had something similar happen, only the doctor, S. She changed doctors and was told the same thing by the second, that there was nothing wrong with her, except she was extremely sick and had been for months. Finally a third doctor checked her blood work and found out she had diabetes. Neither of her previous doctors checked her blood work, they just told her she was fine and shoot her out the door. You often get the flu, then it develops into pneumonia if you don't take good care of yourself or you are weak. Recently, I had a series of surgical procedures to correct osteomyelitis. It should have only taken two procedures. However, because the surgeon didn't pay attention to the pre-op scans, it took four. The surgeon also did not order any physical therapy for my upper body while I was on bed rest for five months. All in all, the recovery time cost me the best job and biggest paychecks I've ever had. The irony, I can't afford an attorney to sue. I am pretty sure you can find a med malati who will uh, offer a free consultant B, might agree to contingency agmt versus hourly billing. I went to the doctor after I had my first baby, 3.5 years ago, because I was so stinking tired all the time. I was brushed off as well. You are a first time mom, of course you're tired. I went to a different doctor after my second child was born with the same so tired I can't do anything symptom and found out I had a parathyroid tumor. If I had taken the first doctor's advice, I would have just ignored something that could severely damage my bones and make me feel like crap my whole life. So I guess this was the opposite of what the OP is asking. Oops. My sister was diagnosed with cat scratch fever. She actually had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. No. Ted Nugent was not her doctor. I was diagnosed with genital warts when I went into the urologist for a vasectomy consult. He wanted to remove them surgically, then put me on female hormones for 6 months so I couldn't get an erection while the skin healed. I got a second opinion from a dermatologist who just blasted them off with liquid nitrogen and was fapping the next day. Not really a mistake as such, but certainly fits under a doctor freaking me out about my health when I need and have worried. I got my period pretty early, at about 11, and for the next 2 years I had really erratic, heavy periods. This coupled with the fact that I am vegetarian meant that I ended up really anemic. I actually didn't really notice the symptoms of tiredness and muscles fatiguing very quickly, as they developed so gradually that I forgot what normal felt like. So it took 2 years before I got a blood test which revealed that my hemoglobin was really shockingly low, it was like a 2, and they were surprised that I was actually even able to function. Of course my anemia was from the constant blood loss, faster than my body could replenish it, and the lack of iron in my diet, and this is the most common cause in someone of my age and otherwise healthy state. My GP, who is brilliant in terms of medical knowledge, but could improve a bit on her doctor-patient communication, was alert to the possibility that it could also be caused by an acute leukemia, unlikely, but something that shouldn't be missed, and needed further tests to rule it out. Unfortunately, she stressed this so much that my parents and I were under the impression that I probably had leukemia, and we were freaking out for days before the tests came back clear. 
happened to a friend a few weeks back. They took their 6 week into the a for a problem with his leg. It was red and swollen. They did an x-ray and the doctor determined it was a fracture. Child protective services were called and they were put through heck. They couldn't be alone with the infant or their other two kids 4 and 2. A police officer and CP agent came to their house and basically went over their living conditions. Interviews the 4 year old and all around just treated the parents like crap. Mum couldn't leave the hospital. A couple days later the doctor did another x-ray and determined it was some sort of infection, blood in the bone, and not a fracture after all. I had a very similar thing happen to me. In 2010 I had a small mole removed on my forehead that was perceived to be a melanoma, which it was. Unfortunately, during the period between my first biopsy and the removal of the mole, a friend of mine hit me in the face with a basketball, causing some serious swelling. When the doctor removed the mole, he biopsied it as well, and noticed that the tissue of my skin had burst nerve endings or something. I'm a bit hazy on this part. This made it look as though I had a desmoplastic melanoma, a skin cancer that old people get and usually die from. Survival rates are super low and the time frame of my existence was looking to be 3-5 years. So naturally, instead of doing two more tests, I was rushed into the chemo ward and began prepping, taking scans to check if it had entered my bloodstream elsewhere. I was also made largely aware of the fact that I would die very soon. Not the best of times. Fortunately though, the day before my first chemo session, I called the doctor to make sure everything was okay. He had forgotten I had the appointment the next day and then told me that all was well and he'd made a mistake. Ridiculous. I have more to tell but thinking about it all is pretty upsetting colon. My brother was a full on tomboy, living in the woods of West Virginia. He got a piece of a stick stuck in his leg. So his dad just dug it out with a knife and wrote it off. A week later he had a bad infection in his leg. And his glands in his neck were swelling up pretty badly. My mother took him to the hospital and ended up calling me at work to tell me about it. This was the first I knew about what I just told you guys. She was crying because the doctor was saying that the infection had gotten into his bloodstream and was going to kill him unless they operated immediately but not on his leg. On his neck. I immediately left work and got to the hospital in 10 minutes Charleston WV is a pretty small town. I went in to see my brother and look at his neck, and even to a layman like me, I could tell that the swelling in his glands was due to the minor infection in his leg. I could see no trace of it besides the hole in his leg where the nurse was draining it. For anyone who has had a blood infection, you know you can see it under the skin. I freaked out on the nurse, who had no idea what I was talking about with this neck surgery, so she goes and gets the doctor. And I proceed to scream at him until he threatens to call the cops and have me taken out. I demand my mother pull my brother from the hospital. And the doctor is saying that she can't. That this is life threatening. Etc. I break off from this and go to the payphone in the air and call my father-in-law. A cop from one town over. He calls the Charleston police for me and they intervene and allow my mother to remove my brother from the hospital. We drove an hour to Huntington to go to a different uh, and the doctors who saw him there saw the exact same thing I did the glands were swollen due to the infection in his leg. But there was no freaking blood infection. After 2 years fighting it in court, my brother ended up with 58,000 due to that doctor's negligence. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.